hormone disruptors. So most people think of hormones as the sexual hormones, right? But hormones really are a much broader system within our body. And basically what they do is they, they regulate our homeostasis. They regulate whether our temperature, they regulate our energy, they regulate um, our sort of how the liquid moves within our body, how, um, you know, how we take in sugar. So, you know, for example, insulin is a hormone. So it's not just estrogen um, or, you know, testosterone. There's just, there's tons of different hormones and they're doing almost everything in our body. Uh, there's organs in the brain involved, the liver, the, you know, the, um, the reproductive organs as well, the, the kidneys, and everything's kind of involved so that our body's functioning all the time and, and kind of maintaining homeostasis. And those are, that's our endocrine system also known as our sort of hormone system. And a lot of chemicals um, disrupt that function. They might, they might sort of lock into receptors or they might sort of displace something that's going on or they just might get in the way. Um, and as a result, uh, things might not work very well. Like for me, I developed suddenly, um, you know, I, I kind of had low kind of chronic low blood sugar issues for some years, but after um, a series of chemicals, some significant chemical exposures, I just had total diabetic symptoms for months and months. Um, and I did not go the conventional route um, and, and take medication. And in part, because when I called my doctor, um, they wanted me to wait nine weeks to come in. So instead I went and did an unconventional route. I took herbs instead and I detoxed. And at least for me, with my experience, I was able to recover and I'm actually able to even put sugar in, um, you know, a cup of tea and or have a little bit of sugar and be fine where before I couldn't eat a dried piece of fruit without going catatonic. So um, I say that to, to demonstrate to you that um, something like diabetes is not just sort of comes out of the blue and is mysterious in your body or, or is sort of um, hereditary and cannot be um, reversed or managed or minimized in other ways. And, and for me, you know, from the, the people that I've talked to, the research on myself and the research I've done in writing my book, um, is the finding that by reducing our chemical load, our body starts to heal, it starts to work better. Um, and the fact that chemicals are known hormone disruptors, we have tons of science on this going back decades, um, is an um, important piece of information for, for our health. Okay, um, I'm gonna talk also about arrested development. So we think of birth defects as this, these sort of obvious things, right? These, you know, it's visible, there's a child who's not, um, you know, not able to think normally or, or, or sort of perform in school, or they might have some, you know, some sort of physical defect. But we are actually seeing a lot more invisible birth defects um, there are cases, for example, of uh, both men and women, and also this goes back to um, animals. Also, we, we, we have cases of this in animals in the wild from exposure to, to toxic chemicals, whether it's um, pharmaceuticals that are now banned, known to be toxic, or from exposure to toxic chemicals that are out there in the environment. Um, we have these invisible um, birth defects, such as um, malformations in the reproductive organs, uh, you know, very hard to see for women, you know, the internal organs, for example, of women are very hard to see, but, uh, you know, you do a CAT scan or something and then you hear back that there's, a, there's things don't look normal. Um, for men, uh, same thing. We definitely, um, unfortunately, we've known for decades in men that the, the average um, penis size has decreased the distance between the genitals and the, the anal area have decreased. So these are all very subtle changes that are malformations that are practically invisible in terms of what we understand to be a birth defect and what society understands to be a birth defect. But 
scientists have known about these for decades. It's just that the information, as I dis discuss in my book, is not getting out into the public. Okay, so I'm telling you this because if you are um, pregnant, wanting to get pregnant, you have a baby, you have a young child, now is the time to take charge of this and um, reduce exposure, clean up what you're putting in on and around your body. Um, and it's, it's really going to behoove you in just the growth and development of your baby. Um, neurodevelopmental disorders, so ADD, ADHD, autism, same thing, um, linked to hormone disrupting chemicals. And then disturbances in sexual development, I kind of mentioned that. Um, but these are all things, all things that have been tied to chemicals. Okay, I want to talk about chemical congestion because this is something that really came through in my research. And that's with these persistent bioaccumulative and toxic chemicals. So these chemicals designed to be long lived, long lasting. The PFAS, the strong stuff and fragrance meant to make it long lived and long lasting. Uh, we also have a legacy of chemicals from decades past that are in the environment, they're long lived. Um, and what they do is they do lodge in those organs and tissues. And so um, we get, our bodies get congested. First of all, um, on, in every moment, as every time you take a breath, every day, every week, excuse me, our body is constantly taking in nutrients, putting them into the, the organs, tissues, and cells of our body and creating energy out of that. And it's constantly generating waste. So all of our cells are generating waste. You know, it's just like where many, you know, each aspect within us, each fragment within us is like a mini organism. Like we, as a human being, or, you know, as an animal, we eat, we poop, we pee, we generate waste, right? And our cells and every little aspect, you know, even on, on a smaller scale of our body is doing that. And when our body is congested with toxic chemicals, it's harder for that process to happen. It's harder for all the nutrients to go in effectively and efficiently. It's harder for the waste to go out. Um, so the end result, again, is that we're not functioning very well. We just might, we, you know, might, our face might be swollen. We might feel bloated. We might feel slower. You might not have enough energy. We might be having an autoimmune response. Um, these are all because of our body is just not able to function sort of normally and efficiently as it would without the presence of these chemicals. So again, um, you know, I'll, I'll go into it a little bit more, but the, the solution to this is to get these chemicals out and eliminate them from um, our bodies and our environment. And that will help boost our natural innate ability to heal and for our bodies to function properly. Okay. So the last aspect I wanna talk about in terms of how chemicals affect our health is the silent winter concept. And this is what my book is called, Silent Winter. Uh, and this is where it all started for me. Um, so at some point, at least for maybe 20% or more of the population or more people, when we are exposed to toxic chemicals and overwhelmed, at some point our body will just shut down. It'll become overwhelmed. Um, we will uh, develop flu-like symptoms. We will just want to sleep all the time. We won't have enough energy. Uh, we might develop um, also an intense sensitivity to other substances, chemicals, alcohol, caffeine, you know, the, all the fragrance and all those chemicals. We'll just, our body becomes overwhelmed and says no more, okay? So this is a self-protective mechanism. Um, but unfortunately, our body's not producing enough energy to, to kind of have a normal life. Um, the waste products are not getting out. The cells are shut down. Nutrients cannot get in. So usually um, people stuck in this sort of, I'm going to call it a chronic fatigue state, tend to um, get worse because things are just not functioning. You know, the body's kind of just closed down. Um, I've been in that state. Uh, people with fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, with lupus, um, with chemical sensitivity, they all experience this state. But people, I know people I know who have experienced this from, for just shorter periods of time. You know, I, I had a friend who told me that her husband was exposed to some chemicals at work, and then suddenly he was so fatigued for a week, he couldn't get out of bed. 
So that's your body's self-defense mechanism to, whoa, I am overwhelmed, okay? And for some people, it might be weak. For some people, it might last six months. For some people, it might last some years, depending on what chemicals are in their body and what they're doing to, um, to backtrack away from that. Mm-hmm.